Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is Shackleton the Explorer, my uh, friendly sidekick. And uh, sometimes this cat's really a mystery. He's wagging his tail, which of course for cats means that they're angry, but meanwhile he's purring extremely loudly, which generally means they're very happy. So I've got a very conflicted cat here. I don't think he'll stay with me long. Uh, but what I want to do in this um, video is, and probably the next few, is I want to talk, give you an update sort of on the climate system. I want to talk about some so-called dashboards. So these are sort of one-stop sites where you can get lots of information on um, how the uh, temperature, the average global temperature is changing, how that's divided up amongst the land and the ocean and as a function of latitude, um, how the greenhouse gases are quickly rising and you know they look at a lot of different uh, spatial and temporal factors on the earth these so-called um, climate dashboards and then I'm going to talk about some recent uh, articles and peer-reviewed papers that have uh, appeared in the literature on basically how um, how bad uh, you know how serious abrupt climate change is how bad things are and, um, you know, sort of existential questions. Um, late last year, a whole bunch of scientists uh, put together a letter talking, saying business as usual just isn't possible to have business as usual, usual and have a sustainable planet, that things are turning catastrophic quickly. And of course, uh, you know, there's a frame, there, there's a view point of a number of different climate scientists that um, you know, if you talk about how bad things are, then that will paralyze people to inaction, and that's not something we want. But you know, I disagree with that point of view. I think you know, for for many years, I've been just giving the straight goods on climate, talking about how serious things are, and uh, you know what we have store in the future from what we can see. You know, and, and lately, um, well, for years I've been talking about the threats to the global food supply, for example, from abrupt climate change and the hydrological uh, cycle problems and so on. And then I'll talk about uh, the Arctic a little bit. And, uh, you know, a recent paper uh, talked about how the ice bridges at, at Nares Strait um, between Ellesmere Island and Greenland aren't forming properly the last number of years and in fact when they do form at all they're they're late now this is an area in the arctic where we have the thickest sea ice so the ice can just freely flow through the narrow strait out of the arctic and also through the canadian archipelago islands um, without being impeded by thick ridges of or so-called ice bridges so as the ice you know at the narrow strait we're seeing flows of uh, ice greatly increasing in area, the amount of in area, but uh, the thickness of this ice is thinner. So the net volume of ice flow out the nearest strait, out the Fram Strait rather, um, has been pretty constant for the last number of years. But out the nearest strait, um, we're getting a lot more ice leaving. And also, like I said, out the Canadian archipelago because of the changing characteristics of the sea ice. So it's only a matter of time before we have this uh, blue ocean event where we, we lose all Arctic sea ice at the end of one summer. Okay, so I'm going to talk a lot about a lot of data in the next in this video and the next number of videos. So please bear with me. And then once I've uh, completed this, um, I have a lot of really good data um, on uh, colorful graphic uh, slides um, that I, I do some work with uh, Peter Carter. You know, he I presented with him at the last. Um, climate conference in Madrid, Spain, just before the virus uh, broke out. And um, yeah, we did lots of presentations and Peter's generated and updated a lot of his slides. So I'm going to talk about those, uh, but that's a few videos into the future. So thanks again for listening and uh, please consider uh, donating to my PayPal page. This is my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. So please uh, check it out if you haven't. And uh, my last post uh, um, was on, you know, I talked about the acceleration of global ice loss, not just in glaciers, but 
Greenland, Antarctica, some of the feedbacks from loss of ice. And also I talked about Biden's executive actions on climate change. You know, Biden's been president for two weeks and, uh, you know, he's got done some amazing, uh, he's, he's signed some amazing executive orders on climate change, including, including spending billions of dollars to take action on climate change. So now I know a lot of people are jaded and saying, well, it's too little too late, but at least it's a start. It, and it's, a, it's an abrupt change from the previous guy. Okay, so here we go uh, with, uh, okay, so here's my Twitter um, page at Paul H. Beckwith. So please make sure you check it out. And if you didn't see the previous videos on the loss of global uh, ice, uh, please, please check out this. And uh, I just want to, sh today's been an interesting day um, in terms of the, you know, SpaceX, uh, they've let, they landed Starship SN9, a test from their Texas site, you know, and here's a, uh, here's a com uh, compiled version of a whole bunch of different shots. And uh, so it went up, reached its apogee, came down um, sideways to break the so-called belly flop maneuver. And only once again, like the last test, only one engine fired to slow it down and it just wasn't enough to slow it down and stabilize it. So it hit the ground hard this time, not vertically, but it's on its side. Um, and, you know, this is a failure mechanism. It seems too simi similar to the last one. So it leads me to ask the question, were they really ready for this test? You know, I mean, they couldn't, you know, there's three engines that should fire to break the thing to land you know, um, to land like the other rockets that they send up when they launch their satellites. And, you know, this um, this is a second failure the same way. One of the engines, only one of the engines, braking engines, uh, broke. Braking, B-R-A-K-E. So braking, B-R-A-K-I-N-G, braking engines. They're, they're supposed to be braking, not braking as in B-R-E-A-K-I-N-G. So anyway, um, you know, lots going on today, and of course, if you're looking at the, um, if you're looking at the, well, here's one of the things on Biden. He, the president signaling, he, he labeled climate change a maximum threat. So he's signaling to the world that we're in the midst of, for lack of a better term, a war, a war against abrupt climate change. Okay, um, this is an image that's quite amazing, um, very uh, you know close up from telephoto lens. And, you know, this, this uh, shows, you know, beautiful clear sky and then how, you know, the starship uh, came down um, too fast and on its side because only one of the engine braking engines worked and uh, loads of other stuff. And he's, here's some of the, you know, if you're interested in monitoring global climate in real time, there's some very good climate change indicator dashboards. Um, so there's four mentioned here. So let's have a look at some of them. Okay, so this is the uh, this is climate.nasa.gov, you know, global climate change, vital signs for the planet. Okay, so you can just uh, you know copy the, copy and paste paste the link into your browser, or just Google you know climate change indicators, indicators NASA CO2 level, you know global average temperature, Arctic sea ice. You know you can click all of these things to expand and get more detail. Um, and you can just, some of the, uh, you know, highlighted uh, news stories are, are listed in here. Of course, the glacier retreat in Greenland, uh, drought. Um, and there's lots of good stories and lots of information on climate change for teachers, etc. Okay, very good graphics on this NASA site. Then we have the uh, ANOAA, climate.gov site. And... Uh, you know, lots of stuff, a lot, how the climate system works, all kinds of different um, tabs that you can click on there. And, uh, you know, it's another excellent, excellent uh, dashboard. You know, it's very easy to, you know, access loads of information here, loads of articles on all different topics. Okay, uh, an excellent learning resource as well. Um, this is the, uh, this is a Bloomberg um, Bloomberg.com, climate change data green. And what's interesting here is, you know, they have lots of like, so we're looking at sea ice here, for example, lots of explanatory, explanatory information 
okay, that you can access from this website. And you can also look at anything else that you want, like there's a ticker here of stuff. So let's look at global temperature, for example. So global temperature change, um, you know, lots of good illustrations of data and, you know, you can mouse over all kinds of things to get more information. Um, you know, here's another portrayal of global temperature versus the 20th century, uh, 20th century average. Um, okay, so, you know, with different events here that affected climate, and here we are right now. So you can mouse over any of these index squares here, and you can see the global uh, temperature. Now, this is versus, versus the 20th century average. Okay. Um, and remember about baseline shifts and so on. So this is an excellent um, source. Um, let's pick one more here. Let's look at tree loss, for example. The, this is the, it's not just the Amazon rainforest, okay? Since I last, since we landed on this page, we've lost eight soccer pitches, 10 soccer pitches of trees. Um, and it gives tree loss, tree cover in 2000 is the, um, and then we can see tree loss tree gain, tree gain and loss in the different, uh, different colors here. And you can see, um, you know, we're, we're heading the wrong way. Glad tree cover loss alerts. Okay. And so on. Okay. There's loads of information here. So just play around on here. Maybe I'll look at one more real time power mix. Okay. This is uh, electricity mix. Um, how it's from the different sources, how much is fossil fuel, how much is is natural gas and the renewables, etc. So you can just mouse over and you can see the trends and so on. So this is an excellent site, you know, Bloomberg, an excellent uh, dashboard site. Um, and let's have a look at this one here. This is the Met Office, the UK Met Office. So we've got the Greenland, uh, Greenland <laughs> greenhouse gases. We've got CO2 concentration global mean temperature difference from 1850 to, to 1900 that average and you can see that you know we're 1.25 or so so add 0.3 brings us to 1.55 we're over the 1.5 bandwidth when we talk about the temperature relative to the 1750 pre-industrial baseline which is a baseline that was set picked by the um, in the for the IPCC reports where we where they were first mentioned the two degrees Celsius um, we have to stay b below two degrees Celsius rise to stay in a safe zone, and that later the the was the aspirational value that was reduced to 1.5. Well, those numbers are all relative to 1750, but the, they've shifted the baseline. So you can again click on any of these things. So this is the sea ice ex extent, and uh, you know you can get more information about sea ice, and there's the data sources are all at the bottom. Let's go back here and, uh, you know, the, the El Nino. So this is El Nino Southern Oscillation. So we set a record temperature high in 2020, um, 1.25 Celsius above the, above the 1880 to 1910 baseline. Uh, add 0.3 to that, that we're 1.55, and that's in a strong El Nino, La Nina year. This is the last, uh, this is the 2015, 2016 um, El Nino. The temperatures were over two degrees Celsius. This is the ocean temperatures near the equator. And we had a very, very powerful one in 1998. If you recall, you know, strong one here in, in uh, that's about 2010 or so, right? And, uh, but here, you know, the earth is cooler. The, the earth should be cooler because of the La Nina this year in 2020, and it's still ongoing. Um, and uh, yet we set a temperature record. So this is a, a huge problem, a huge, huge problem. Okay, um, just to remind you, this is my Facebook page. Uh, look at, uh, you know, Paul Beckwith, paul.beckwith.9 to find my Facebook page. And, uh, you know, my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I've got uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on all different topics. Okay, thanks for listening and I'll continue. Bye for now.